Well, look, my wife has a rule in our family. On somebody's birthday, sing happy birthday. You ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, dear Valley. Happy birthday to you. He didn't know who it was. He, he lost track of to whom he was singing happy birthday and just kind of drifted off as he so often does. Joe Biden. And who was he? He was trying to sing happy birthday to the, the granddaughter of Martin Luther King Jr., right? And, uh, and he just lost track in the middle of it. And he started looking around for Xi Jinping. He's the president of the United States. The Democrat Party and the media, but I repeat myself, they love him. They prop him up just as they did during the campaign all those years ago. And now he's the president of the United States. Just extraordinary stuff. Uh, 81 years old today is Joe Biden. He turns 81. He uh, was the oldest president ever the day that he was inaugurated. And now he's older than that. And they're looking to give him another four years. And it's going to take uh, more than a year before he would be inaugurated a second time. So uh, Joe Biden, again, not everybody his age has uh, lost it, his non compass mentis. But, but Joe Biden certainly is. You know, he would... He would get out of having to stand trial. That's, uh, that's true because of his brain issues. That is a that's a serious thing. Now there was a poll out the NBC News poll. NBC Fake News did a poll, and they asked at uh, eighty, now turning eighty-one years old today, Biden not having the necessary mental and physical health to run for a second term. They asked. They uh, they asked people in their poll. They asked a, a thousand people. They're registered voters, the people that they asked. So they said, do you, do you think that, you know, Joe Biden, does he have the mental, physical health to run for a second term? Is that a concern of yours? And 59% of respondents in the NBC News poll, 59%, nearly 6 in 10, said it is a major concern, a major concern. Another 15% said it is a moderate concern, a matter of moderate concern. And another 12% said it is a minor concern because, you know, they're not very smart people, those 12%. And then 14% said no real concerns, no real concerns about Joe Biden's mental health. That's the 14% of people that don't follow the news at all, not at all. But if you take the 59% major concern and uh, 15%, Moderate concern, right? That's a whole lot of people, isn't it? That's like 74% of us are either very concerned or moderately concerned that Joe Biden's brain is no good. She's a no good. In fact, the Wall Street Journal has a story. They had a story over the weekend. Their editorial board put out a piece. Joe Biden turns 81 years old, running for re-election in his, condi- in his condition as an act of profound selfishness. That's the headline. Tell us what you think. And the Wall Street Journal writes, during the 2020 election, concerns about his age were muttered sotto voce, sort of under your breath, uh, muttered softly. But now we're front and center in his re-election bid. Next week, Mr. Biden will be 81, they wrote. Already, he is struggling on camera and limiting his public schedule. That's for sure. And uh, he is definitely limiting his public schedule. His aides fear he might trip again on TV. Then why is he asking the public to keep him in the Oval Office until 2029? Can you imagine? When he will be 86 years old if he can't take the rigors of a presidential campaign. Why would voters think he can handle four more years of a grueling job? Not so grueling for him, because he's not really doing it. Which might include being shaken awake in the wee hours to respond to a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. Honestly, that, uh, that ought to be considered an issue. And I mentioned that the Washington Post had a uh, piece also over the weekend where they're talking about Joe Biden and the Democrats and how the Democrats are 
while they're wetting their bed is what's going on. Biden campaign works to ease Democratic anxiety over re-election chances. The Washington Post wrote, The president and his team are facing calls to become more active and aggressive in highlighting the contrast with his most likely opponent, Donald Trump. Sure, that's uh, because Trump bad and uh, Biden barely living. But the Democrats are fine with that. They're fine to have a sock puppet in the Oval Office as long as it takes orders from the party, capital T, capital P. Honestly, over the uh, last full weekend of September, Hollywood titan Ari Emanuel, brother of former Chicago mayor and current Japan ambassador Rahm Emanuel, hosted his annual off-the-record power conference. You know, this Ari Fleischer, he's the Hollywood agent, right? They call him a super agent because everybody's super everything when you're a Democrat. He's the the guy, what's the name of the TV show? Entourage is based on Ari Emanuel because it's a great big Democrat Party circle fest out there. Got to tell you. So his off-the-record power conference, which they'll now put on the record because they don't respect anything. Gathering fellow luminaries, he's a luminary, of entertainment, finance, politics, and technology in sun-dappled Aspen, Colorado, naturally. At one point during a political panel that included Ron Klain, President Biden's former chief of staff, an audience member worried aloud that the Democrat Party had a serious problem. Biden is too old and could lose the election. Oh, no. Then what would we do? This person fretted before asking the question and has been disquieting Democratic circles for more than a year. What is the backup plan? Turns out that Gavin Newsom has hit all new lows in his polling numbers in California. But they don't care because, look, they got Joe Biden elected from his basement. They got John Fetterman elected from Frankenstein's laboratory. So they could get a, you know, a can of Alpo elected president because of the information dominance that they have secured, that they enjoy. Now, at the same time, the, the Democrat Party in the Washington Post here, they're going on and on in this piece because there's a lot of hand-wringing going on. You know, lots of people, Democrats, remain confident in the senior team around Biden, most of whom continue to work uh, in the White House and have weathered many similar waves of public grousing in previous campaigns. Sure, pay no attention. I've been here before. This happens all the time. That's a lie, and the Washington Post is peddling the lie from the Democrats who are peddling the lie. And the Washington Post quotes one fundraiser. One fundraiser. They've got one fundraiser. It's anonymous. Everybody's anonymous in these news stories because they're lying most of the time. And one fundraiser told the Washington Post, the bad news is everybody is wetting the bed inside of Biden world. It's really an unhappy confluence of Biden world donors. They're, they've got world donors. They got, you know, uh, Biden world donors. A uh, cocktail party friend saying, can't you get him not to run? Which is stupid and absurd and absurd if you know Joe Biden. Why is that stupid and absurd if you know Joe Biden? Nobody can talk him out of anything because of the brain damage. And But they're all, they're all wetting the bed. And James Carville uh, explained to us recently that he was wetting the bed and his wife got him rubber sheets. So well, they got that going for him. Now, also, the Washington Post, the bed wetting, the Wall Street Journal calling into question, Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper is on CNN, which is a Democrat Party front group. And Jake Tapper is a former Democrat Party Capitol Hill staffer, as you all likely know. And uh, Jake was was on his television show over the weekend being a Democrat on the Democrat channel. And he was quoting David Axelrod, who was, of course, an Obama administration official and former Chicago news reporter, right? News reporter, Democrat Party apparatchik. What's the difference? Most of the time they go from the Democrat Party to the news media. Uh, Axelrod went from the news media to the Democratic Party and now pretty much back to the news media because it's all the same thing, you see. Because as Benito Mussolini explained when talking about fascism, he said fascism is a merger of state and corporate power. And that's where we are in the United States, America today with the Democrat Party and the information oligarchs who have big carbon footprints, by the way, but I'll, I'll get to that. So here's Jake Tapper uh, 
more hand wringing and lamentation on on CNN about Joe Biden. Can he win because he's so old and his brain is broken? America's uh, oldest president and his team say age is just a number, but Obama advisor David Axelrod age is just a number. Reality, quote, I think he has a 50 50 shot here, but no better than that. Maybe a little worse, he says. He told Maureen Dowd. He thinks he can cheat nature here and it's really risky. They've got a real problem if they're counting on Trump to win it for them. I remember Hillary doing that too. Yes, uh, Hillary counted on, well, Trump is so terrible. I, I, of course I'm going to win. I can't lose to Donald Trump. And then Donald Trump won. And Hillary Clinton has been a chronic alcoholic ever since. I assume at least, you know, she does wake up quite frequently face down in a pool of her own dried vomit on the kitchen floor with an empty one-gallon cardboard box of cheap Chardonnay from New Zealand next to her, but pay no attention. And Axelrod telling the New York Times, which is part of the Circle Fest in the hot tub, right? I think he has a 50-50 shot here, but no better than that. Maybe a little worse. Well, that's what all the polls say. So he might have just read the polls because like 46% for Joe Biden to 48% for Donald Trump. So that's a 50-50 shot, maybe a little worse. So there, here's the political genius uh, reading the polls and parroting what he just read in the polls. He thinks he can cheat nat- nature here, and it's really risky, really risky. They don't want to risk losing power. They've got a real problem if they're counting on Trump to win it for them. I remember Hillary doing that too. That's that's kind of uh, that's kind of perfect, isn't it? And and they're in a panic. So what do they do? I posted a video. How long ago now, Michael? Uh, I've been talking about this for months and months that Joe Biden will not be the nominee of the Democratic Party because he's not up to the task. He's not up to the job. And I know it. You know it. The American people know it. The Democrats are are crawling in that direction because honesty is really not their thing. The Wall Street Journal calling him out, the New York Times calling him out, David Axelrod calling him out, Jake Tapper kind of gingerly calling him out. The NBC News poll says that 74% of us believe that his mental acuity and physical health are either a major concern or a matter of moderate concern. And that means that Joe Biden is in danger and that the Democrat Party is out to get him because power, because power simple one word thing and the the fox news poll shows what we as voters are concerned about um and you know ask me uh if i'm concerned about inflation and or higher prices which they've separated out from one another now because democrats maybe threats to personal rights uh because you know that the left is coming for your rights in fact, if you go to the Chris Plant store, you'll find T-shirts and coffee mugs with the left is coming for your rights, which is true. And that's why we say it. Uh, also, higher crime. They asked the Fox News poll, are you extremely or very concerned about inflation, higher prices, about threats to your personal rights? The left is coming for your rights. Higher crime rates. Democrats are robbing and shooting everybody. They're all Democrats. Political divisions, are you concerned about that? Are you worried about the um, Israel-Hamas war? And those of us in the Fox News poll who are extremely or very concerned about inflation and higher prices, 89% of us, 9 out of 10 virtually. Threats to our personal rights, 82% of us. It's all the left coming for your rights and for your children, grooming and creepy, sniffing. Higher crime rates, 82% of us concerned about higher crime rates. Political divisions, 82% of us, all on the Democrats, all on the Democrats. The the political divisions, uh, you know, they're calling everybody, uh, you know, let's keep in mind, they're the real fascists and the real Nazis and the real jihadis. Uh, uh, Just borrowing from their uh, book of rhetoric there. Uh, And the Israel-Hamas war, 74% of us. Notice that nobody's calling for a ceasefire in Ukraine. Why is that? I've got a lot more on that. And then the jihad, the Democrat Party and the jihad together again. You know, CBD, CBD is everywhere. They're putting CBDs in everything now. And my friends at Generic CBD have infused CBDs into their number one best-selling deep penetrating muscle and joint cream. Let me tell you, the stuff is amazing. It melts right into your knees, your elbows, your shoulders, your back, and your stiff hands, your knuckles, your fingers. 
goes to work in a matter of seconds, and it's a, even my best girl tells me it's a fantastic moisturizer all by itself. The company is called GenericCBD.com. You've heard me talk about, about them before. They sell premium CBD products for less cash. And right now, you can try their muscle and joint cream for free. For free. You pay $2.95 for the shipping, and that's it. But there's no subscription, no strings attached. They just want you to try it because they know you're going to love it. You're going to buy more for the people around you and for yourself. So get the free sample today at GenericCBD.com. That's G E N E R I C C B D.com. GenericCBD.com. It's free. It's great. People love it. Look at the reviews online. These products and statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent any disease or illness. But dun 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 dun. Yeah, why do you hear the Democrats and the jihadis? Yeah, so Joe Biden has got to go. He's got to go, and they're and they're starting to say it out loud now. I've been saying it for a long time. I'm way, way ahead, as is so often the case. And now the Democrats are catching up. The New York Times, the Wall Street Journal. And I've got more on Joe Biden and the jihad. Where do you hear these? And did you see Susan Saran rap? You know, she's an actress. Did you see her? Crazy. And Rashida Tlaib. They hate the Jews. That's my mommy's name. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Visit ChrisPlantCruise.com. Yeah, the Washington Post is uh, just a hate cult. They're like the Hamas of journalism. Now these anti-Trump pieces, voters must take Trump seriously and literally. The stakes are that high. They're really caught up in their political spokes here, aren't they? These people are completely nuts. They're out of their minds. And another Washington Post. I'm looking at the Washington Post online right now. And they have Latino backlash grows over Donald Trump's friendly Univision interview. Isn't that the one that got him in all the trouble for uh, saying that uh, he might uh, think about using the Justice Department when asked to, against his political enemies? Uh, since they're using the Justice Department against him and the FBI, against him and all his friends. Uh, But the Washington Post is furious, and there's Latino backlash because everything is race-based with the left because they're the biggest racists in the world, by the way. Members of Congress plan to ask for a meeting with a company executive as a famous actor, not very famous, and Univision founder and Latino rights advocacy group speak out. They're speaking out their advocacy groups. And uh, because the the interview wasn't hostile enough and John Leguizamo disapproves. Oh, no. Yeah, Joe Biden wandering around bumping into furniture and uh, creeping out. Uh, you know, it's the, the little girl. What'd she say? Six years old, right? And he says, "What are you, seventeen? Eh, eh, eh. I like your ears. <laughs> uh, I like to stay in Lodge Wonka with you, but I cannot." <laughs> well, this is, how old are you? Seventeen? Six. She's six. No, she's six. Oh, oh, I like your ears. Nibbling and sniffing, children again. And yeah. I love your ears. I love them. They're really cool. But- you know, the thing is, it's not like he is avuncular or uh, grandfatherly or paternal. He's creepy. He's creepy. Where is Tara Reid? Oh, she fled to Russia because she didn't feel safe in the United States with the Biden family on the loose. That's creepy. It's good to be a Democrat because that would be a big deal, if only. It wasn't like creepy Joe. It was just, you know, joyous guy. Joe Joy- who loved to hug and kiss yeah. mothers, uh, brothers, yeah. kids. And Grand he's moms. affectionate. <laughs> I like your ears. Well, are you 17 years old, maybe? <laughs> Would you like to come with me to Jack Nicholson's house for a jacuzzi? Because I think that uh, that's where Roman Polanski drugged and sexually assaulted the 13 year old girl. Um, and that's all okay. Uh, Roman Plansky, the last time he showed up, he got a standing ovation from all of Hollywood, led by 
Huh? Harvey Swinstein, right? And Meryl Streep. That's my mommy's name. <laughs> That's my mommy's name. All right, let's take one more phone call. Then I'm going to get to the jihadis because the Democrat Party is the jihad. The jihad is here in the United States. And the Democrat Party is ushering the jihad into American political life and beyond. Democrat members of Congress, academia, uh, you know, Democrats. Uh, but uh, first, let's grab a phone call. Let's go to Matthew calling from St. Louis, Missouri. Matt, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Chris, happy megaphobic Monday in Caliphate Topia. <laughs> and um, so when you, your account of Biden talking randomly to Xi Jinping reminded me of this past summer when um, he talked to the Buckingham Palace Guard. You remember uh, King Chuck the Turd had to come usher him away like his visiting angel because his visiting Dr. Angel wasn't around. Um, uh-huh. But we've learned now, we've learned what Joe said to the uh, soldier. Uh, Joe thought he was at an after show meet the cast party following a Christmas in July performance of the Nutcracker. And he wanted to talk to the guys in the tall fuzzy hat. And what he said to the, the Buckingham Palace Guard was, um, God save the queen, man. And when the soldier told him the queen was dead, Joe said, you're a lying dog faced pony soldier. And that's when Chuck the turd intervened to prevent an international incident. So, but now we know, now we know what the discussion was then. And who knows what he said to Xi Jinping. That's exactly right. At, at long last, we know what Joe Biden said when he wandered off. It's true. He was with uh, King Chuck and wandered off to talk to a, one of the palace guards. And they're not allowed, of course, to speak to anybody, including the president of the United States. Uh, they maintain a strict code there. And you can talk to them all you want. Uh, been there, uh, done that. You know, I, I didn't uh, uh, pretend that they could stand there and have a conversation with me like, like uh, Joe did, though. Uh, and he embarrassed himself. He embarrasses himself all the time. And because he's a Democrat, he enjoys the, the hermetic protection of the American news media and late night TV and Saturday Night Live who uh, have all of this material and never use it because they're cowards and they cower at the awesome power of the Democratic Party who will crush them and cancel them and destroy them, take away their income and their families and uh, destroy them if they deviate from the party line, which is one of the reasons it's so much fun to deviate from the party line. But you're right, that moment with the soldier. And now, uh, and you're right also, Matthew, with uh, Joe Biden wandering off to talk to Xi Jinping at the, the APEC summit in California while someone else was addressing the group, and Joe Biden was apparently unaware of this. And if you're a Republican, you would be crucified for that, that that video would run on a loop for a year. It would be everywhere, be on late night TV, Saturday Night Live would mock it. All of the 24-hour cable channels would just be rolling it over and over again uh, because, you know, they'd feel it necessary to make a fool of you since you've just made a fool of yourself. Right? But, Matt, when you're a Democrat, that's why I always say it's good to be a Democrat. It's not really good to be a Democrat, but if you're a crooked, brain-damaged Democrat politician— you can shoot somebody in the middle of Fifth Avenue and the news media would, would applaud. They'd give you a standing ovation like they did for the fugitive child rapist Roman Polanski. It's just extraordinary. Uh, Matthew, crazy political times we're in, huh? Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, you know, and like you're saying, how they cover for you, it's same thing with, you know, John, it's not a tumor, Federbunkle, you know, Quasimodo, same thing. He can get away with the craziest, stupid stuff that they just annihilate Trump for if he was doing the same things. So yep. yeah. they're, they're always covering for him. There is a great old saying, Matthew, were it not for double standards, liberals would have no standards at all. Uh, and the Democrats and the news media, but I repeat myself. A couple of great old sayings. Matt, thank you. And you've got a lot of great old sayings too. And they're new sayings and they're uh, great ones. Uh, uh, Fetterbunkle, is that what you call him? John Fetterbunkle? Yeah, it's not a tumor, uh, Federbunkel. So it's, he's Quasimodo. You know, he's swinging around in the in the tower at Notre Dame. Now that it's rebuilt. So. Yep. Hump? What hump? <laughs> there he is. All right, Matt, thank you. Great uh, great call. Uh, great St. Louis call. Great St. That's America. That's in the middle of America. You got some crazy Thanks people there. Ha- have a happy Thanksgiving, too. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You as well. You as well. Oh, I have the list over here of the things people least want to talk about at Thanksgiving. I want to share that with you as well. God save the queen, man. 
There he is. There's Joe Biden. He's our president. He's not an embarrassment. Let's go to him because over the weekend, he, he told a lie that had been debunked again and again and again where he claimed that he was going to go to the Naval Academy and he was accepted to the Naval Academy. And, you know, then he decided to go to City College instead because I'm um, not really. I made that part up. But here, here's, uh, here he is telling this lie that has been debunked again and again. Joe Biden. You know, by the way, <laughs> I'm all Navy, but uh, I was appointed to I, anyway, I was going to go play at the Naval Academy until I found out the other guys in the backfield were a guy named Roger Staubach and Joe, Joe Bellino. So I decided to go to Delaware. But our son, so I, I always used to root for Navy. That is a fabricated story. That is an untrue story. That is a false story that has been debunked again and again. Um, and where we, I, I was actually at the Navy Air Force game at the Naval Academy a few weeks ago with my best girl and with Larry O'Connor and Meredith and, and uh, enjoying the football game. And Roger Staubach was there at the game. Football hero at the Naval Academy and uh, obviously beyond. One of the great quarterbacks of all time. And he was a classmate of my Uncle Tony, of my Uncle Tony at the Naval Academy as well. My Uncle Tony went on to a career in intelligence. And I'll leave it at that. Cold War stuff. Serious stuff. The real deal. All right, let's get to, uh, let's get to the jihadis because now the Democrat Party is the party of jihad. They, they love death more than we love life. And the... The Democrat Party loves – we, we, I played the audio last week of the young Americans who are in their 20s worshiping Osama bin Laden because they read a two-page letter to America that Osama bin Laden wrote in 2002. And these college age or slightly older Americans who look like normal people on the outside were singing the praises of Osama bin Laden himself – the uh, the big daddy of Al Qaeda end of September 11th, 2001, and the Democrat Party has raised a generation of Americans whose thinking is more aligned with Osama bin Laden and Al Qaeda than it is with Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln and and Ronald Reagan. God forbid, right? The great Ronald Reagan. And the, uh, the Democrat Party is completely out of its mind. Now, there was a, a pro-Hamas rally. Let's go through in some order, I guess. Number 15, Susan Sarandon, also known as Susan Saranrap. She was, I think, in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And she was in a movie called Joe with Peter Boyle. Nobody's ever seen it except me, but it's kind of fun. And Susan Sarandon, who is a, a classic Hollywood left-wing mental case, and she has been for a long, long time. She was at the pro-Hamas rally in New York, flying the Hamas flag, and she says the craziest things. She said that basically she's, you know, hey, you know, uh, Jews in America are feeling threatened these days, and that's good because now they know what it's like to be a Muslim in America who are constantly targets of violence according to Susan Saranrap. There are a lot of people that are afraid, afraid of being Jewish at this time and are getting a taste of what it feels like to be a Muslim in this country, so often uh, subjected to violence. It's important to listen. It's important to have facts. Try to take a breath before you answer. And if it's possible, have a conversation. We need a ceasefire now. Yeah, ceasefire now because that's what Hamas wants, and she's a spokesperson for Hamas. She is always she's always been a mental dwarf. Uh, so let's start with that. But now you Jews in America are finally getting a taste of what it's like to be a Muslim in America because America is a terrible racist country and Islam is a race. Everything she says is wrong, and then she talks about facts. They use the words, but they don't know what they mean. So often, Muslims are so often subjected to violence in America, which brings me back to the 20-year-old Ohio man who was arrested the other day after faking a hate crime that he fabricated, claiming that some white guy uh, attacked him. Kill all Palestinians. Long live Israel, he chanted, and then he ran him over with a car. See? Uh, He turned around and hit the man while shouting, Die! And this is the Council on American-Islamic Relations. 
and this Muslim man in Ohio uh, was beaten up by his brother. He's got a violent brother. Ended up in a hospital bed with a hospital gown, a neck brace, a tube in his nose, a blood pressure monitor on his arm, and care came in to take pictures of him and publish because America is a terrible racist country and Islam is a race. And all the attacks on Muslims uh, are so terrible because we're an awful, terrible country, right? And it turns out it's another Juicy Smollett fake by another fake who wants to be a victim, just like Juicy Smollett, because on the left, the most exalted status that you may possess is that of victim. And Hasham A. Ayad, 20 years old, has been arrested. He should uh, be incarcerated until deportation. If deportation is an option, then get him the hell out of here. Oh, and then we've got this uh, student in in uh, Canada that I want to share with you, too. Uh, but there's Susan Sarenrep because, yeah, now you Jews finally know what it's like to be a Muslim. She's glad that you feel threatened, that you're menaced, that your children are afraid to go out, that campuses are dangerous. Uh, and the uh, the Democrats have a congresswoman named Rashida Tlaib, and they had an event scheduled at the Arizona State University, a pro-Hamas rally. Naturally, Rashida Tlaib, who is a terrorist at heart and pro-Hamas, if you're pro-Hamas, you're a terrorist, right? It's like it's the same as being pro-Al Qaeda. And Rashida Tlaib was there to support and uh, defend Hamas. And then the Arizona State University management, the administrator, said, well, this was not cleared by the university. It was done by an outside group that's not a student group who claimed that they have a right to have events at the university. None of this has been cleared. There are issues with everything from parking to use of the room to security, so you're not allowed to have it. And then they said, oh, we're being canceled because of racism, because Islam is a race. And Rashida Tlaib spoke to the glassy-eyed zombies by way of a Zoom call. This is not about me only. This is a movement that's growing beyond just one person. Movement and growing. so threatening to one person. Arizona State University. And I can tell you as a Palestinian, my people have been displaced for over 75 years. I'm not going to be silenced. I'm not going to uh, step away from being able to speak up about truth, about what is happening. Yeah, it's more than one person. Like, she's the center of the universe on this. She's the sun, and everything rotates around her. It's a growing movement. It's a movement that's growing beyond one person. And she's not going to remain silent because she was displaced 75 years ago. Uh, And, you know, so you got 141 square miles of beachfront property. That was the, you know, two-state solution with training wheels, okay? And it turns out you're blood-sopped murderers and hostage takers and rapists and you're plotting to murder millions of people next door and wipe out the country from the river to the sea. And Rashida Tlaib is a from a river to the sea person and she chants it and her friends chant it. That means wipe out, exterminate Israel, kill all the Jews, you know, uh, should be uh, part of the deal because it is. And... um, And what were they chanting? Why do you hear what they were chanting at Arizona State? Because Rashida Tlaib is their inspiration. It's a growing movement. It's the jihad displaced 75 years ago. You're welcome to live in Israel in peace. It's the most peaceful and the most prosperous democracy in that region of the world, and you're lucky to live there. If you didn't want to murder everybody, things might work out a little better. But we tried the two-state solution with training wheels, And it turns out you just want to be in a shooting war. Now, the news media has demonized Donald Trump, I think, more than any uh, American politician I've ever seen. That's for sure. Maybe more than any world leader that the Ayatollahs are not deemed by the American news media to be as dangerous as Donald Trump. Vladimir Putin is not as dangerous. Xi Jinping, not as dangerous, because it's about their political power. But, you know, the uh, the lunatics, and I, I want to get to that. And then uh, on MSNBC, it sounded like a reporter called for Donald Trump to be killed. Isn't that what it sounds like? To be eliminated, right? That's pretty amazing. In the meantime, what is not dangerous is the growing jihad inside the United States of America being pushed by the media, the Democrat Party, but I repeat myself, Rashida Tlaib, 
called it a growing movement, and uh, they don't have enough waterfront property from which to destroy and kill. But at Arizona State University uh, over the weekend, because Rashida Tlaib was talking to him by Zoom call, they had a rally, and Israel is the terrorist state must be wiped out. One, two, three, four. One, two, One, three, four. Two, three, four. Occupation no more. Occupation no more. No more occupation. Listen. This reminds me of during the Occupy movement. They had that uh, insane college professor uh, teaching them all to chant like glassy-eyed zombies. Arizona State over the weekend. Uh, they're close to the border, so it's Viva Palestine. Sieg Heil. Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber Rallis. Viva, viva Palestina, they're chanting in the United States of America. Uh, not exactly viva Las Vegas, is it? You're a Democrat party. Viva, viva Palestine. Uh, you know, there's, there's no such place as Palestine. There's no such people as Palestinians. Um, I did see, however, that uh, Jordan and Egypt are putting more troops on their borders to make sure that no so-called Palestinians get in. Because uh, I think they've got a reputation as being blood-drenched murderers, hostage-takers, rapists, um, you know, savages, radical Islamic jihadis. They don't want any more of those. There are enough living among them. I've got more. Where do you hear this young woman from Canada? She's a student. The jihad is here. (laughs) 